And greetings YouTube gamers, welcome to another episode of Retro Raider, my name is Johnny Retro and welcome to the channel. So we just had another Nintendo Nindies Direct showcasing the upcoming indie games for the Nintendo Switch. I have a couple of notes here and I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this Direct. And to be fair with you guys, I'm usually more excited about these indie Directs than the standard Nintendo Directs because, you know, I just love the indie scene. And when it comes to modern platforms, I truly think that the Nintendo Switch is the best for indie gaming. So, let's get started. The intro was going a little bit bizarre for me until they announced Cuphead for the Nintendo Switch. Cuphead is going to be released on a Nintendo Switch April 18. This is a game that I still haven't played it but I wanted to play since day one and now I'm going to play it on my Nintendo Switch. This game combines old school Disney cartoons with retro platforming. I remember seeing a short documentary about how this game was made and produced and uh, it was very interesting. It looks like a very fun game, every graphics in the game was hand drawn and it just looks a fun game to play so definitely want to check out in April for the Nintendo Switch. Next we have Overland that's going to be released this fall. So this is a turn-based strategy game and uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of this War of Mine, The Little Ones. It was also announced a very bizarre exclusive, My Friend Pedro. This one is going to be released in June this year. Speaking about bizarre games, next we have Neo Cab. I don't know if this game was already available in other platforms, but uh, I never heard of it. It looks like a story-driven cab driving game with the uh, cyberpunk feel to it, but it definitely caught my attention. Now this next one, I think that this is going to be big on the Nintendo Switch. The Red Lantern by Timberline Studios. Now first of all this looks like a very emotional game, you know how it is when you have animals in the mix. So in this game you navigate through Alaska to find your way back home. So I think that you're lost in Alaska and you have a team of dogs to help you out. It also has a lot of survival elements to it and the whole trailer of the game guys, yeah it really felt like a very emotional game to me. Next we have a retro style horror game, Darkwood. This game kind of remind me a little bit of the old school Diablo games in terms of graphics, in terms of the presentation, the overview. If you like horror games, if you like retro style games, Darkwood is probably going to be the game for you. And it's coming to the Nintendo Switch in May. Now this next one is definitely one of the most exciting ones for me from the presentation and it is Katana Zero. A 2D side-scrolling action game and uh, you know, this is really the type of indie games that I want to see in modern platforms. This game definitely takes me back to the early days of the Super Nintendo. I love the graphics, I love the pixel art style of the game and it's coming to the Nintendo Switch in April. April 18. Now Double Five Productions presents Rad. Now this game looks like an overview futuristic action RPG, kinda goofy but in a good way and what I really enjoyed about the trailer of this game was the soundtrack. It has this killer retro style 80s to it and honestly it seems like a fun game to me. Red is coming to the Nintendo Switch next summer. Now this next game is called Creature in the Well. The feel that I got from this game was originality. I think that the concept of this game is brilliant. So this is a pinball action adventure game and at the same time it is a dungeon crawler, so imagine a dungeon crawler meets pinball. The graphics are very original, the gameplay looks super addictive, and like I said guys, after watching this trailer, I never saw anything like this game. No release date for it, but definitely one to watch. We also got Blood Roots. To be honest, I was not very excited with this one. It looks like a very generic top-down action game. But then we got the announcement of, and I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be an exclusive or not, but we got the announcement of Pine. Now the trailer of this one totally blew me away. First of all, it looks like a very ambitious title for an indie title and uh, I'm saying that in a positive way. And from the trailer, it is a little bit obvious that this game draws a lot of influences from Breath of the Wild. And again, I'm saying this in a positive way because, I mean, Breath of the Wild is, is a masterpiece. So this is an open world 3D person action adventure game. You know, from the graphics, the characters, the survival elements of the game, that's why it kind of reminds me a little bit of Breath of the Wild. And if you can pull this one off to grab the formula of Breath of the Wild and put it into your own game, well, you got a hidden gem here. Pine is coming to the Nintendo Switch next August. Then we got some arcade style retro games. The first one, Super Crate Box. The Nintendo Switch version of the game will include an exclusive multiplayer option. Then we got Nuclear Throne, which is going to be available today. Then we got Ultra Box, that looks like a very cool space shooter. Speaking about retro 2D shooters, this next one is called Swim Sanity. Swim Sanity is a 2D multiplayer underwater shooter. I'm not very good at shooters guys, but this one seems like a very cool one. Next we got the sequel to Blaster Master Zero. Blaster Master Zero 2 is available today on the Nintendo Switch. If you don't know about this game, this is kind of a retro style NES game but on the Switch. Now the next one guys, I think that this one blew everybody's minds away. 
Stranger Things Season 3 is coming to the Nintendo Switch. So this is an isometric retro style adventure game based on the popular Netflix series Stranger Things. This game will include 12 playable characters, and I mean guys, if you like pixel art, just, just look at these graphics. This game screams retro through every pore, and it's going to be released in 4th of July, the same day that Season 3 of Stranger Things is going to be released on Netflix. This is brilliant stuff. Now, last but not least, we thought that the presentation was over, but it was not. I think that they really saved the best for the last, and um... Uh, this game is a crossover, a crossover between a dungeon crawler game released in 2015 called Crypt of the Necromancer and a little Nintendo game called The Legend of Zelda. First of all guys, I never heard about Crypt of the Necromancer, but uh, it looks like, you know, this old school dungeon crawler 2D game and apparently we are going to be able to play with Link and Zelda in the world of this game. Now by looking at the trailer guys, it definitely reminds me a lot of A Link to the Past and I would guess that Crypt of the Necromancer draws a little bit of influence from that game. So a retro inspired 2D dungeon crawler game with Zelda and Link in the mix, I'm sold. Definitely the indie game to watch on the Nintendo Switch. Let me know on the comment section below guys, what did you think about this Nindy Direct? Did you enjoy the presentation? What are your favorite upcoming indie games for the Nintendo Switch? Let me know on the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to put a like on this video, please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves, take care of the gaming community and game a lot.